nice to be here with everybody today. This is Julia Mills, Life Vantage Distributor in Raleigh, and I'm here with my dear friend and um, that I've known now for a few years, uh, Dr. David Katz, and I'm going to let him share his background with you, but uh, honestly, I've worked uh, with physicians very closely since 2003, uh, first in the pharmaceutical industry, and then after a neurologist shared nutrigenomics and evidence-based therapies to help the body heal itself. Um, and I was sick. Uh, I went to functional medicine for health. And so that's how Dr. Katz and I met initially is in a functional medicine group. And uh, Dr. Katz is one of the most uh, intelligent, kind, knowledgeable uh, physicians and, and persons that I've ever met. Um, just uh, really has blessed my life. And I know so many other people uh, that he's blessed um, with his knowledge and wisdom in healthcare. So uh, we're gonna spend some time together here today. I, I have some questions that I wanna ask him and to be able to hopefully share uh, his knowledge and experience and background with more people. So um, with that said, thanks for being here, Dr. Katz. Oh, thank you for asking me. And it's uh, been a pleasure to uh, know you and to learn from you as well. You, you have a tremendous amount of knowledge that you um, are willing and able to share beautifully. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think we both, uh, this common uh, interest and, uh, and just a common thread, you know, between us is that we really just want to try to get good information out there so everyone can live their healthiest, happiest uh, life. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. And so tell me, so I'm going to just start with the questions. I'd love for the audience here to hear a little bit about your background, your profession, uh, how many years you've been uh, in uh, the medical practice, and just tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, I am a pediatrician, and I've been practicing for 39 years now, and um, I went to osteopathic medical school, and the philosophy there is a little bit different than traditional medical school in that, that there's a belief in the inherent ability of the body to heal, and so this was part of my education and indoctrination from the very early start. However, we learn traditional medicine, and in traditional medicine, our goal is, is to arrive at a uh, look at the signs and symptoms, or use our physical examination and our powers of observation, and come up with a diagnosis. And from there, we go into a treatment, which in modern-day medicine is usually some sort of a pill to help take care of the ill that the person has presented with. Um, I, after my training, I went to uh, Canton, Ohio and practiced there for 33 years and uh, really enjoyed that practice very much so, but moved to the Triangle area due to having four of our seven grandchildren living here and uh, without any support system. So my wife and I decided that, that we needed to, uh, to move down to where the kids are and to, uh, and to be their support system and to uh, work on my medical career here. Um, along the way, I have um, been very curious. I, I feel that there's an, a lot that we can offer, that there's a lot that our brains and minds can do to help us to be healthier. And so uh, in my curiosity, I became certified in various areas, of course, in pediatrics, but I also became certified in uh, hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming. And uh, one day, one of my nurses came to me very excited and said, Dr. Katz, I heard a lecture by a doctor who thinks just the way you do about the body healing itself. And I brought you his tape, and it was Dr. Mark Hyman, who had given a talk on functional medicine. And he is uh, currently chairman of the board, but has been president of the Functional Medicine Institute. And he was the founder of the Cleveland Clinic's functional medicine program and is still involved in their planning and things. Uh, and so he is extremely knowledgeable and very, very well-versed in medicine. And, and so his lecture was just absolutely inspiring to me and, and gave me a thirst for figuring out more that I could do to offer people to be healthy and how I could enable them to 
take their health into their own hands and do what they needed to do to, uh, to change whatever was going on that wasn't right for them, whatever chronic illness or, or problem, or just to live a healthier life in general. And so I became um, convinced that the Institute for Functional Medicine was the route to go. I obtained all my different training, which what took over about four or five years to get all the different courses in to become certified in functional medicine as well. And I've been practicing as a functional medicine physician now for 11 years. And the most gratifying thing about medicine in general is, is, is helping people to be their healthiest, to, um, to watch children grow up healthy and to see them mature from, from uh, infants to uh, adults. Uh, I've had, even had the wonderful opportunity of taking care of three generations in one family where I had taken care of the grandmother and the mother and now an infant of that same family. So um, that it was phenomenal, um, you know, so it, it, it's just, that's the pleasure of, of being, of doing what I do is to help people when they're acutely ill, of course, to use the modern tools of medicine to make them better. But for many of our chronic illnesses, the modern tools of medicine really fail us because doctors, we have, as doctors, we have not been taught how to really do this well, how to most effectively fix our chronic diseases because most of them are rooted in our lifestyle and imbalances that we have in our body. So it seems like um, you believe that it's really important and almost imperative to, to really use functional medicine, even in traditional medicine, right? Talking to your patients, you have found that they are open and interested in what are ways that they can do um, to improve their health that's not just kind of the acute, more traditional route. So you're incorporating it into your traditional practice as well? Well, I think that it's, it's very important. Everybody has to really recognize that there's a lot that they can do mm -hmm. to help themselves be healthier, to keep themselves healthier. Every patient that I'm talking to now and we're still in the midst of our um, shutdown due to COVID-19. Um, but every patient, doesn't matter what I'm seeing them for, I'm offering them things that they can do to help stimulate and improve their immune system to be healthier. And those really are, are the five pillars of health. And many times we are not living the lifestyle that allows our body to to do this and and traditional doctors just have not been trained in this they would love to do this but you know the in the overwhelming majority of medical schools there is little to no education about um, nutrition and how that affects our body and so much of the time is taken up in teaching diseases because that's what the students are being tested on um, that there's not a lot of time spent in how to have people change habits and, and how to diagnose when their habits, their lifestyle is really causing their illness to begin with. And so what to do for it and how to deal with it. Well, and you said you went, you went back to school. So after you um, had your DO and you were practicing in the clinic for a long time, you went back for another almost five years to get additional training on those things that you didn't get when you were in medical school. Absolutely. And, and so there's in the functional medicine training, which um, was over a five-year period, it was uh, a course, uh, there's six, seven different courses that you take uh, to become certified in functional medicine. Um, and each one of them spends a considerable amount of time talking about the nutrition related to that area, talks about the other lifestyle factors, the the significant importance of sleep, um, not just the hours of sleep, but getting the right quality of sleep. Uh, and then of course, exercise. We spent two hours learning how to write an exercise prescription for someone. In medical school, we were said, 
we were told, well, you just have to tell someone you need to exercise more. But, but with that very simple suggestion or even prescription, it didn't figure out, it left to the patient to figure out what does that mean and how do they do that? And so a considerable amount of time was spent in actually detailing that for a patient, working with them, which is the functional medicine way. It's not dictatorial. It's a, part it's a partnership uh, between you and the patient to look and see where they are, where they've come from, and then where they need to be and what they need to do differently to attain that level of health. Um, and so those are two of the big areas that, that we spent a considerable amount of time on uh, in, in figuring out how to help people to be healthier because they have a profound effect on our, on our whole body function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. epigenetically, just I mean, every cell in the body responds when we have proper nutrition, proper exercise, proper sleep, low stress, things like that. That's right. You've named a lot of them. Yeah. You know, we, we all have bad genes. Mm. Uh, everybody does. And um, somebody described it really, really well. It's like a book with 23 chapters. Each chapter represents a gene. Mm -hmm. And inside each chapter, there are many stories. And each story represents those chromosomes, those characteristics that we have. And that when you read a book, if it was a scary book or you had a scary chapter, you may choose not to read that chapter because you just don't like to feel that way. Um, or if it was extra sad, you may say, well, I don't want to be sad today. I'm going to read the happy chapters, the fun things. Well, our genes are the same way. And we have very powerful things that turn some of those bad genes off and turn some of them on. The turn on good genes or turn off good, bad, off good genes. So we have, so how we live our lives and what we put in our body and on our body and do to our body determines which of those chapters get read. And so if you have a bad gene that never gets read, it never manifests. You never get sick from that problem. And so many of the things that we have discovered can definitely be modified by how we live our lives and, and, and completely reversed. You still have the gene, but if the gene isn't, isn't read, isn't manifest, then you don't have the disease. Well, what are some things that would turn on a bad gene? So I don't want to turn on my bad genes. I'd like to keep them off. What would well, turn on? some of the things that you mentioned, making sure that you have restorative sleep every night, for instance, our immune system literally takes out the garbage at nighttime. Our brain does the same things. Mm -hmm. And so we have all these things that are accumulate during the day that are, are really poisons to our body, um, have to do with, many of them have to do with the making of energy in our bodies, the mitochondria, which are the parts of our cells that, are, that create the ATP, those little molecules that fuel every single cell of our body. Well, there's a cost to doing that. And the cost is that it makes byproducts that are toxins to our body, which it holds in. Um, some of those are due to what we call oxidative stress, where uh, a result of burning oxygen to make ATP, which is required, um, creates these different factors. Uh, other, than, other of them are just byproducts that we have to do. Well, if you're not getting the right quality of sleep, the brain and the immune system can't take out the garbage, can't get those things, flush them out so that they can go into the system so that our liver, which is our great metabolizer, can take these substances which are very toxic to us and convert them into non-toxic things that can be excreted through the bowel system or the urine system um, or breathed out, for instance. So it's really essential to give the body time to do that. Likewise, all of these are chemical reactions to get rid of these things to make us healthy. If you don't put in all the right ingredients of nutrition, the vitamins and minerals, all these chemical reactions can't run at their most efficient state. They'll run, but it's like trying to tie a hand behind your back and work. And so they don't, they don't work as well. And so um, providing those with the right kind of diet, the diet is, is information. And so the right kind of 
nutrition that's coming into your body can go in and tells the body to turn on those good genes or turn on those bad genes if it's the wrong kind of nutrition. Uh -huh. And so we control that. And, and that's, that. I mean, it's fascinating science. And you learned a lot about that through functional medicine. So, you know, just the fact that you have that knowledge um, that we want to hopefully share with more people and, and probably is growing, uh, you know, I know the whole field of epigenetics and nutrigenomics is, is just expanding. It's expanding. growing exponentially. Mm -hmm. We are learning every day. There's new information about how we can um, turn on those good genes, what we can do to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Exercise turns on genes. Stress management, as you mentioned, is really critical for, for much of these things. And so many of our, there are five basic pillars that we have, and we've talked about the we've talked about sleep and we've talked about exercise and nutrition, stress, and a purpose in life, a reason for getting up every morning, relationships with people is the fifth. That is really critical. And all five of these things, you want to be firing on all levels to be their best in order to be your healthiest. And, and part of that is, is helping your body to do what it needs to do. So um, not, and it'd be wonderful if we could turn on all these good genes with just our nutrition. But part of the problem is, is that it would take so many, we know that broccoli is really good for us, but it would take so many plates of broccoli that we would have to consume every day to get the molecules, the small molecules that we need out of that broccoli to turn on the genes that we know broccoli can turn on. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we have done is we've often, we've turned to various supplements, which we know can do the same thing as what food can do, but much more efficiently. And by studying these, we have learned how to manipulate our genes to really turn them on. I'm gonna show a picture oh, cool. in here. Uh, of, of what that's like, of how our genes are controlled. It's not something that I have here right this second, but I'll, I'll put it in here so that you can see um, how these are controlled. And, and basically there's um, genes, normally we think of the double helix for genes, and that is true, but that's, those are genes that are ready to be read. But the reality is, is most of our genes are tied up like a ball of string is. The string is all there and it's intact in one piece, but you can't see the individual fibers very easily when it's all balled up. Well, when it's getting ready to read, it unballs the string and opens it up so that you can see those individuals. Um, and so there are proteins that control it. And we used to think that it was our genes that determined our destiny. But what we have found out that it's really the proteins which decide which genes get opened and read that really are controlling what's happening in our life. And that's what we've termed epigenetics. It's not the genes themselves, it's the controllers of the genes. And so many of the things we're talking about really control the epigenetics of what's happening in our lives. And so the good proteins, um, those proteins, when they turn on, they open up the good genes for us. And so we can do that through all the things we talked about, but also we have learned that there are various supplements that augment our diet um, to make it even better, to turn on those good genes. And so uh, one of the very exciting things um, when I first met you, Julia, is that you talked about how, you know, Protandum, uh, NRF2 activator, mm -hmm. and versus a supplement of all of these different things, it really turns on those genes that turn on the, the NRF2 protein, which goes into our nucleus and then turns on the genes that do so many different things. Over 500 genes in our body are turned on by this one group of supplements that we take and they have a phenomenal array of different things, processes in our body that they help to um, maximize 
for our benefit and for our health. They're mm -hmm. turning on many, many good genes and they're actually turning off many bad genes. And so in that process, they help to turn on genes to help us detoxify uh, many of the chemicals that we're making ourselves and things that we're putting in our body. They turn off genes that cause inflammation. Uh, they turn uh, off genes that would cause um, increasing in the lining of our, of our blood vessels and things of that nature. And so they do many different factors. And, and these are things that are, <clears throat> unlike many supplements, are not just claims. These have been researched by universities with peer-reviewed uh, published articles that um, are detailing this. I think um, when we when we first met, we first started talking, you know, first of all, you know, we, we both love science and we, we love to learn uh, what's new, what's coming, new technologies, uh, new therapies that work, that really tap into our, our miracle body. Our body is brilliant, um, you know, isn't it? So that's been fun to work with you on that and to just kind of, um, collaborate and, um, and, and, you know, just share ideas back and forth as to what's really going to help. Um, and I know one thing at the beginning, uh, when we first started chatting about it a few years ago was that you didn't want that to replace people's understanding of, uh, how to live a healthy life, right? I mean, we all, there are things that you just, those five pillars, and I love the one about the purpose too, that's so powerful. But those are, those can't be forgotten, right? Those are important. All well, time. that that was my big concern. Yeah. Is that, is that Protandum might give people the idea that back to traditional medicine, here's a pill to take care of many ills. So instead of doing the work to change, and we, we've got to change to make our, ourselves healthier, um, that we could take a pill instead of exercising and proper nutrition and stress management and things of this nature. And indeed, some studies have shown that when you are doing all those things, that the line of different nutraceuticals that we have with ProTandem, NRF2, NRF1, and NAD are even more effective. So they are effective on their own, even when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. But when you're really doing what you're supposed to be doing, that they work even better, that they help you to be even healthier um, than either one of them alone, than lifestyle alone or the supplement alone. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of this. Uh, in my functional medicine training, we learned all about NRF2 and NRF1 and um, but they were very much an enigma on how to influence them effectively. Again, you can't have plates of, of broccoli and cauliflower and, and kale and things of that nature. It just doesn't fit in our ability to do that. And so here was something that could take what we are doing, if you're doing it right, and make it even, to fine tune the system even better to make it more effective for healthy living. Thank you for sharing that. that. That's really, really fascinating. And I don't think we've, we've kind of had this conversation before, um, but that, that, is, that is powerful. And, and for me, when I was first learning about this, what was really powerful uh, that I thought of in my future, my family's future, was if I could keep the bad genes down, keep the good genes up, then over time, over decades, as I age, um, you know, I'm going to be living a longer, healthier life. And that's actually one thing that the National Institutes on Aging did in fact find in the lab is that our healthy lifespan is longer. Um, so it's a different way to look at health. You know, it's not just go into the doctor and get something to fix a problem. It's, it's how do we really optimize the body now and for our future, right? I think you said it really well with the phrase, healthy lifespan. Mm -hmm. We all have our lifespan, but the ideal to me is to have it to be a healthy one, that we live our lives and that the last 
you know, many people's cons concept of getting old is getting frail, of getting, you know, having multiple ailments happen. And so the ideal to me is that we live healthy, that we have a full life, that we have all of our faculties and all of our abilities right up to the end. Um, and not that we don't age. And I, I believe, in fact, I know that we can reverse aging. We can do that by doing all the different things that we've talked about. Um, they've shown um, the tips of our chromosomes are called telomeres. And they're like the, they look like the tips of your shoelaces where they have a special coating on them. And the length of our telomeres is really the health of that chromosome. And so if the telomere gets shorter and shorter, it, it means the number of times that that chromosomes in that cell can reproduce. And when they get so short, the cell says, I can't do this anymore. And it, it undergoes um, a process of basically cell suicide. It, and, and so it has to be replaced. Well, we have shown that in people by changing your lifestyle by putting in the right ingredients in your body and doing all the things we've been talking about that you can actually make your telomeres get longer. In fact, I meant I know a functional medicine cardiologist who must be in his 70s, uh, but, and when he started his program, um, he, his telomeric length was in its 60s, mid-60s, um, and because he changed his lifestyle and his everything that we've talked about, diet, nutrition, and exercise, um, Dr. Houston has shrunk his telomeres, uh, has enlarged his telomeres so that they were really in the late 40s instead of being in his 70s. And so that was pretty remarkable because we can measure that. Not an easy measurement, not a cheap one, but it's measurable uh, to show that these things really have an effect on, on making your cells healthier and making you have a longer, healthy lifespan. That is so incredible. But knowledge is power because like you said, I think the vast majority of people, people I know and um, you know, believe that as we age, we're gonna need more medications, we're probably gonna get a disease or two, and you know, I, you know, I may need to go to a nursing home or, you know, that's not necessary. Possibly no. it's not necessary. So knowledge is power. Um, this information is, is readily available. It's just kind of knowing where to look, right? So Absolutely. Well, and one of the things that I'm a, a very curious person, uh, but I also believe in doing my homework. And so when you presented these to me, the very first thing that I did is I went into the um, natural medicine database and looked up each of the ingredients uh, to, and I still do for products that I recommend in my functional medicine practice that are not what you're going to find in a regular pharmacy, is that I check each ingredient to see what are its effect. And even though something's natural, doesn't mean it's completely free of side effects because these things are affecting processes in the body that can be interactive with other processes and things in the body. And so um, it's really important to uh, make sure that they're healthy and that they're safe. And, and that's indeed what I did. And, and so uh, through the research, we know that, that even though these are for the majority, the overwhelming majority of people are going to be very safe, very effective at helping you to live healthier, but they're not for everybody. And that's something that we do need to, we do, we do recognize mm -hmm. um, that when you, when you improve the immune system to make it healthier, uh, if you're on a medicine because you have a condition which needs to suppress the immune system, that may not be the best idea is to put them together because one might counteract the other. So um, it does take a little bit of judiciousness to be aware of, of is there a reaction or interaction with things if you do have a problem. But for, for many chronic conditions, um, it will enhance them and enhance your body's ability to deal with them and and make you healthier and, and oftentimes help you to um, let your body heal itself so that you might not need some of the things, the treatments that you're already getting. Exactly. exactly. No, so true. Um, that's one thing that, that I do really like a lot about 
Life Vantage and the products is because of the medical doctors group and uh, the ability for thousands of medical providers to really talk about those things like you're saying. It's not, it's in general very safe, um, but you do need to, you know, do your research. That's one thing that, again, I like that a lot besides the PubMed peer review literature that's mostly independently funded, um, but also the group of medical providers that are most like yourself, functional, integrative, holistic, um, but they're very knowledgeable of um, when it's best to use and maybe when not to use. Um, because right now, you know, there's a lot of, there's so much online and there's, you can get any product you want and there's a lot of marketing hype and things like that. And I do worry that people are wasting their money or they're maybe doing, you know, they could be doing something that is not safe for their body and they don't really have, you know, um, medical providers to kind of talk to about that, who understand NRF1, NRF2, NAD in the body systems. Currently, we see so much in the um, press about things and, they're, and they're, they take the very, very superficial view from an article that's being published because the news cycle is so short and they have so much news that they need to produce. And so they, they really shorten it and just take a conclusion and not really look at the whole evidence of what's going on and how to do things. And so oftentimes, and, and of course, this is an area that is not well policed by anybody. And so a lot of claims are made about things that, that are not true. Pro many products hit the market, for instance, that, that claim to... Um, enhance some of the factors in our body uh, by giving you the raw products to do it. Um, but they're ignoring the fact that they can give you the raw product, but as soon as you put it into your stomach and intestines, your body's going to digest it. It's going to break it down into something else. And so even though you think you're putting in something that's effective, um, that it's really not going to do the job because it can't uh, get either absorbed fully or it's modified or changed. And and that's one of the things that I love about the ProTandem line is that it's not trying to give you what you need. It's activating your body's natural ability to make what you need, to modify these products inside of your cells. So, so the NRF2 we've talked about, the NRF1 is a, is a product that goes inside the cells and then it turns on the genes that help your mitochondria to be more efficient, to help them to be healthier so that they have less oxidative stress as they're doing their job and giving us all the energy that we need for all the different things that we do in our body. And, and so that is a phenomenal product that yes, we could give you some of those products that, would, that are turned on by this, but they probably would not get well absorbed or utilized in the body. So instead, making our bodies make them themselves is far more efficient by turning, activating those genes than it would be by giving the byproducts and or end products of the genes. And the same with the latest product, the NAD uh, activator. Uh, there are many people who can give those different aspects of NAD as a supplement but they again have to be absorbed and have to be put back together and utilized in the body. Instead, ours turns on those sirtuin genes, which are the genes that have been shown to be prolonging life um, in a very efficient manner. So, so efficient that within a very short period of time, days, that you have vastly increased the amount of the um, chemicals in our body by turning on their genes to manufacture them to do the function that they need. It's just, it's just incredible. And it, it seems to me that, I mean, with the nutrigenomics industry, $17 billion by 2023, people are starting to understand this. I, I run into more and more people who understand the idea about um, activating genetic pathways, you know, and they're not just, you know, science geeks like us or 
or medical doctors, but they're, they're people that are learning about it. it. It's on the cover of Time and, and many magazines now. So it is a wave of the future and it is going to allow us to be healthier. And that is what's most important. And that's the goal. That is totally my goal is to help people to live their life to their fullest, be able to do what they want to do and, and have their body operate well. That's right. Oh, yep. That's right. Well, do you have any last things to say uh, in, our, in our interview here? Any last comments? This has been really, really fun. Well, I just encourage people, if you, know, if you have a chronic problem, to really get to the root cause of it. And one of the ways to do that is by a functional medicine evaluation, because that's the goal of functional medicine is to not treat the symptoms, which is how we were trained as physicians, but to get to the root cause of why the problem is there. And then to um, really consider how can we maximize what we're doing uh, to help our bodies and what can we do to aid our bodies to be their healthiest. Uh, certainly through all the lifestyle things we've talked about, but also taking the right kind of supplements, uh, A, is going to be far more cost efficient and B, much easier to do um, than to try and always do it just through the very natural ways that we know are good for you, but are very difficult to achieve. And so I think with this line of products that uh, Life Vantage has, that we really can help people to uh, make themselves as healthy as possible. I know that it certainly has done that for me, that I feel better, I, um, I am operating better and doing more things now than I could uh, three years ago when I started. And so the, it has been wonderful for me to be able to do that and uh, to do it. Uh, when I've started to do this, I have stopped taking many of the supplements that I was taking because instead of putting things like resveratrol into my body, um, I'm able to have the different production of things to do that job for it. And so it's much easier and, uh, and very effective. Yep, yep, very good. Yep, same for me too. Uh, certainly has changed my life, it really has. And I, I want everyone to know about it um, before, you know, you don't want to get to your later years and wish you had done it for right. two years prior, 30 years prior. They say the earlier the better, and it just makes sense if it's related to our gene expression. So it's an exciting place to be, and um, maybe we'll have a chance to do this again sometime. But for more information or for looking at the science for this, you can go to my website, drkatz.lifevantage.com. That's D-R-K-A-T-Z dot L-I-F-E-V-A-N-T-A-G-E dot com. And there you'll find all different types of resources about the, the product and the science behind it and, uh, and anything other information that you need and a way of contacting us if you should have any questions. Dr. Katz, thank you for your time today. It has been a pleasure as always. So take care and we'll talk to you soon. Always. I hope to see you in person soon. I know. Me too. <laughs> We'll make that happen. All right. Be well. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.